let's zoom in in the Archean era, which is the first point where the microbial life started to emerge. All the way up till the mid 20th century, we used to believe that it was relatively difficult for life to emerge, that it was a chance event of sorts until 1952 when Stanley Miller and Harold Urey conducted the Miller-Urey experiments where they simulated Earth-like conditions in a test tube, ran electric sparks through it, and immediately they discovered the presence of organic molecules, thereby implying that if you have Earth-like conditions, it's relatively easier for life to emerge. So let's pause here. How does life emerge if you have those Earth-like conditions? And then do you agree with this conclusion I've drawn that if you have Earth-like conditions, then it'd be quite easy for life to emerge? Yeah, um, everyone has an opinion on that. And <laughs> it, it turns out that, you know, when you look around, you see the only instance of life that we know about in the universe. Now, it, it's interesting that just within the past two weeks, uh, a survey was published among scientists as to, do they think it's probable or improbable that life exists elsewhere? Yeah. And, you know, something like 85 or 90 percent of scientists think, yeah, it's probably there somewhere now. The, the problem, of course, is detection, not uh, not speculation. But I, I do agree with Stanley Miller, who uh, I think I wrote about this once, that I was once at a meeting that Stanley was at, and somebody asked him how long it took for life to begin. And Stanley thinks for a minute, and then he says, well, he says, I think a decade's too short. <laughs> and he says, and, and maybe a century is too short but if you can't do it in a million years, you probably can't do it. And, and that really encapsulates this view that if you have the right environmental conditions, then they will give rise to self-replicating evolvable systems that we, that we call life. And since this epical Miller-Urey experiment, there have been thousands of experiments being done, an increasing number in the last decade. And they do seem to tell you that, yes, under plausible early Earth conditions, which would include, ah, this is interesting. There's one school that says, well, you want to do this in lakes because wetting and drying is important and you, you have a number of chemical conditions in lakes that would be great. Others say, no, it's deep sea hydrothermal vents uh, because you have a series of conditions that are good as well. And I like to remind both camps that if you go to Iceland today, you find lakes sitting atop mid-ocean ridges, hydrothermal ridges. So in places like Iceland, before there was life, you probably had conditions that would give rise to things like amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, uh, nucleotides, the building blocks of nucleic acids. And again, there's been experiments that show how those can link up to make something functional. And in particular, that you can have selection, like natural selection, on molecules that do certain things, like replicate faster or with more fidelity. So broadly speaking, I think we've learned enough since Stanley's experiment to think that yes, there are many ways of getting to the molecules that make, make up life and that it, you know, it might be that under many conditions, some of those will emerge as self, self-replicating and evolve, evolving systems. Um, now, it has to be said that when we look around our own solar system, there are a number of meteorites that are actually rich in amino acids and things like this. And those, I don't, a lot of people say, well, they're telling us that the materials of life came in from outer space. I think what they're really telling us is that maybe it's not that uncommon to have the conditions where you can make things that could come together and, and form life. So I think we've, we've learned a lot. There's still a lot we don't know. I don't want to oversell the state of our knowledge. And, and, but the problem really now for life in the universe becomes one of detection. Uh, I, I'm fond of saying that when you, in our own solar system, we can go to other planetary bodies and moons and, and uh, asteroids and that and actually look for evidence of past or present 
life in our, you know, larger cosmological neighborhood, we can start looking at extrasolar planets, which, you know, when I was in graduate school, none were known. Now it's thousands are known and they're being discovered on a regular basis. Uh, and some of them we now have the ability from some very, very clever uh, engineering to actually make inferences about atmospheres of these extrasolar planets. And so that might allow us to have some inferences about life, not, nothing yet. But, you know, for the most of the universe, it's too far away for that, that to work. So for most of the universe, the only way I think we'll ever know about life out there is if they call us up and tell us. So, so again, it's, it's the difference between logic that tells us, yeah, it could be fairly common given the billions of stars with, you know, most of those systems have planets associated with them. Yeah, whatever happened here may well have happened in another place. Demonstrating it is hard. I get the feeling that what this experiment did successfully was bifurcate the question about the origin of life and say, yes, it can be relatively easy for life to begin to originate, but persistence of life is a question we haven't solved yet, right? So it's quite possible the organic molecules will develop or how it would evolve over time and whether it would persist is now a separate question that's evolved out of that finding. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. In fact, I... I increasingly like to emphasize that what might be unusual about earth is not so much that life began, but that it has persisted for 4 billion years. Uh, that may be rare. Uh, again, we don't really know, but uh, all of the vicissitudes of earth physical history that we talked about uh, a little while ago allowed life to, to persist. And, uh, you know, 4 billion years after it starts, we get things that have technology and are capable of sending signatures into space and for better or for worse are capable of changing the planet around them. Mm -hmm.